You may wonder why the shoe that I'm showing you how to make in this video is called a tubis. Well, tubis are shoes that are made in the same way, but they have inner tube over the entire bottom sole. This is for a motorcycle inner tube. But we're going to do something different. We're going to have just a, a regular sole on this custom maca shoe so it doesn't have that black edge coming up alongside the sole. To make this shoe, I start with having someone draw around my foot. So I put a, a file folder as a good material to use. Stand on the file folder or a piece of paper and have someone draw around your foot with a pencil straight up and down. Then modify it so it makes a better sole. And that means uh, you don't want all these little toe scallops here. So uh, make a line, a smooth line, not too much in front of that longest toe, just a little bit. I straightened this outside edge, and then the inside edge I'm, I'm uh, leaving. You also might want to make your heel symmetrical. So when you cut out one half of it as you're cutting out your file folder, and then flip that over, and then use that as your pattern to draw the other half of the heel area. I drew around my sole pattern and there's one more measurement that I need to make and also there's some math that I need to do. The other measurement that I need besides the outline of the foot, the distance across at the widest part of the foot, the ball of the foot. So here I get three and three fourths inches. And another measurement that I need is around the foot at this point. So I took a, a tape measure and went around the foot and saw that it was nine inches around. You could also, if you don't have a tape measure, just use a string, go around your foot and mark where they, the string two ends meet and then lay that against a ruler. And that will give you that number of how much space you have to have around the ball area for the shoe to fit. I'm making both the upper pattern and the bottom, the sole pattern, exactly the same. So that means that we have three and three-fourths inches across the pattern times two because the sole pattern and the upper pattern will both have three and three-quarter inch. So that means three and three-quarter inch times two means that I've got seven and a half inches here with the two patterns around the ball area. But I need nine inches. So that means I'm going to add some material to the sides. I don't want like a flat pancake shoe. It's got to have some more width to it. So what I do is take nine inches and then subtract the seven and a half from it and see that what I need to add is one and one half inch. So one and one half inch will bring me up to having nine inches around. This gets divided by four. And so when I divide four into one and one half inch, I get three eighths inch. And that I need to add three eighths inch at uh, both sides of this ball line on both the upper and the sole. And if you want to add a little bit more just to make sure it's wide enough, you can add maybe an eighth of an inch. But realize that an eighth here, you would have uh, four eighths or one half inch. Be half an inch extra that you're adding, and that's a lot. So maybe just a little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch to make this just a little bit wider there. Now I'm adding 3 8 inch all, array, all the way around my sole pattern. I start here at this ball line and add out 3 8 of an inch there and 3 8 of an inch there. And then I draw a perpendicular line down to that line at the base of the heel. I do the same thing on the inside, but I, I want a little less 
bagginess in there. So uh, I curved that line in a bit just so that in the arch area it's not quite so loose. And then I used a compass to I draw a line 3 8 inch from the uh, sole pattern. Now I'm adding stitch marks. After all these years, I finally bought a high quality compass and boy, the, using something from the hardware store didn't really serve me, so I'm really happy to have this very nice compass. And I've set this at um, about 3 16 of an inch. I don't know if you can see this since it's pencil, but um, I'm going to continue marking that all around the edge. When adding stitch marks, start here at the at this uh, line below the heel so that you can get that stitch mark right, right in the corner so that you can use that stitch hole for both stitching the upper to the sole and also for stitching this heel tab to this area of the sole. Now I'm going to add the stitch marks and I like this distance which is about 5 16 of an inch, just a little bit more than a quarter inch and so I have that distance between each of these stitch marks. So I'll head on around For adult shoes, size 8, which is what I wear, I like to have the back of the heel come up about 3 inches. And I think that's pretty standard. It might be a little, little bit less for smaller sizes and a little bit higher for larger sizes. But it, it doesn't vary much from this. You can check uh, when you try on your mock-up, you can check whether that 3 inches for a tab is right for you or not. So if this heel tab is going to be three inches long, that means that the combined sole pattern and the upper pattern, when they are stitched together, should equal three inches also. So that means that both the upper and the sole need half of that, or one and a half inches. So I measure in one and a half inches on one side, and one and a half inches on the other side, and then that tells me how wide my tab is. So my tab is the width between those two one and a half inch marks. So I've got a tab that's whatever this distance is, and three inches that I've now uh, taped to my salt pattern. To get my nine stitch marks here along the tab, I usually eyeball it. I First I put one at the bottom and one at the top, and then I find the center just with my eye, but of course you can measure and be more accurate. So I've got that one done, and then I eyeball one in the middle of those two, and of course I do the same thing here. I find this one that's in the middle of these two. And then I fill in each of these spaces with one, two, three, four additional stitch marks. And I do that on the other side. That, and then that means I need nine stitch marks on the sole and upper that match up with these stitch marks. So that means on the so I put four. The, the last uh, stitch mark on the sole, I want to place that near the end so that I don't have to make another stitch hole for uh, so close by for um, the stitching of the tab. So I've got one there. I put one about the same height that this one is at and then fill in the other two. So I've got one, two, three, four, and of course I'll do the same thing on the upper and have four, and that means that the there's one that just wraps around 
um, where you stitch the upper to the sole, you've got this seam here, and so I grab uh, around that stitching to make that uh, center hole, and then finish off with the four that will be on the upper. To make my upper pattern, it's going to be exactly the same size as the sole pattern. So just cut another one of these out, and then you see that I have different top lines drawn on here. And I uh, also have a halfway point, so that's the distance halfway between these two points. It's a good point for making an espadrille top line or the channel top line, but you can, you can move them back and forth wherever you want, including the pointed one and the espadrille. Once you have both of these patterns made, then make a mock-up. Uh, use felt or Peltex interfacing and use your pattern and see if you need to tighten up at the back of the heel or not. To do that, what I've done is this, this, is, this makes the pattern exactly the same as this one, but I, cut a, I made a diagonal line cutting a little bit off of the top line, so that's about a quarter of an inch that I took off. So that means the top line is two, two quarter inches or a half of an inch shorter, so that makes it tighter. And if you find from your mock-up that it's still kind of loose, you can actually take a little bit out of the heel tab too, not at the base, but angle it up towards the top to take out another maybe eighth of an inch or three sixteenths or so up here at the top. To get this diagonal, you have to see which ones go together, and it's this one matches up with this one. I took a ruler and went in a quarter of an inch here and then down to zero here and made that made this diagonal. And then I did the same thing on the other side so that the top line around the heel area isn't baggy and fits nice and snug. Here's the Peltex interfacing mock-up that I made to test out my shoe pattern. You can also make this out of felt. Uh, Non-woven material is the easiest to work with, but if fabric is what you have on hand, then you could use that as well. Since I wanted to make this fast on my sewing machine, I added one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around so that I could get that stitching in exactly the same place that it would be when I make my leather shoe so I would get the same fit. Here's my cut out sole piece. I want to place this sole in the right place. I'm going to cement it on. I'm going to put contact cement on here and in this area, but I want it accurately placed. So I made a copy of my pattern, then cut it out. The cement has dried. I know then where to place this so that it will be perfectly aligned. I don't know if I dare put this in place while I'm filming, but I'll give it a try. I have the cement dried now on both surfaces and I made some marks with a silver pen and if you want something that makes the shoe look a little bit more like a standard shoe use a piece of leather, a vegetable tan leather, that's easy to obtain. Then you can either just have that as your sole if it's thick enough or you can then cement, you can have the leather piece used as a midsole, stitch it on, and then cement another piece of either rubber or another piece of leather to that to make the sole. I've got slits made all around the edge of this midsole, uh, so I will be stitching it on. I'm going to use artificial sinew because that lies very flat, so when I cement the bottom sole to this, um, it will be a smooth surface to 
adhere to. Here you can see what I did with the upper. I cut that uh, pointed top line and thought I would embellish it a bit with a kind of a reinforcing strip along the top line and some colored stitching. And there in the front, it was a little hard for me to make that neat, so I put the circle over it and stitched around it. You may have, have noticed that I used staples to hold this upper and sole together. I find that I can't find those little tiny holes that the staple makes afterwards, and it most securely holds the two pieces together, especially when I'm punching holes through them both. But of course, um, paper clips, something like that would also work. To know where to place the stitch marks, I copied the marks that I had made on my pattern. So th this was the pattern here, and I brought those marks out to the edge so that I could see them when I put this in place. And then with the silver pen, I marked where, according to these marks out here. Going to punch out the stitch holes in both the upper and the sole at the same time. Fortunately, I have a tool like this that I can make slits, which is what I prefer. And each time, just making sure that I'm going through the two layers in exactly the same place. So I'll head on around here. Oh, you could also use this zero zero punch with a piece of wood or plastic cutting board under and then a mallet to hit it with. And if you just have one of these, then you can use this on the smallest hole. It's a little big for my preference, but um, you know, this is an inexpensive way to have a variety of sizes of, of uh, hole punches. And just using a hammer with a nail and some the wood or plastic underneath can make fine holes too. I'm starting to stitch the sole and the upper together. Cut about a foot of thread for every 10 stitch holes. To do that, I make a knot, it should be a couple inches from the um, end of the thread, and go and have that knot on the inside of the upper. Then I next go through the first of those four stitches here on the sole. Then I go right back up so it's a simple straight stitch across. Now the next stitch that I do is going to be a diagonal stitch. So I go into the sole and up through the upper straight across on the inside. So I've got a diagonal stitch there. And then I again make a straight one, a bar stitch. And that's what I do all the way around. So the stitch starts to look a lot like Z's. So the next is diagonal, straight up, continuing with the bars of straight across and then a diagonal. I've finished stitching upper to the sole. I'm here ready to make my uh, final knot. I'm going to go around two times just to make it a little more sturdy. And then I'll thread this end under a couple stitches to hide them. And now it makes a lot more sense when you how this works at the tab. Because I said we have nine stitch holes here. And so here's the nine here. We've got four on this bottom, on this sole. We've got four on the upper, and we're going to put one stitch is going to go around this thread there in the center of the stitching. So, so that's going to be what we're going to do now, is stitch from the top down to the bottom, 
on both sides of this tab. If you have a if you lined your shoe, then you would need to stitch across the top too, so that the lining um, is secure. I'm starting to stitch the heel tab to the body of the shoe. I have a needle at both ends of a th thread, and I'm what I'm showing you is I said that you would have four stitches on the upper here and four stitches on the sole, but the fifth stitch in the middle is anchored in a couple of threads. So I'm ready for that stitch and I've got my diagonal and a bar here and so I took my needle beyond both of those pulling it through so that now I'll have a nine of these X's and the reason why I did this with making the X's instead of the other stitch that we mostly used, the diagonal and bar is that it leaves a knot down here at the bottom. Want the other technique had a knot at the beginning and a knot at the end. A knot that I've um, taken the end under a couple of threads and then I'll clip that off. Down here, so I made those X's and then made a knot. You can take the ends and hide them under a few stitches, which is what I usually do, but also you can burn the knot. Uh, this is a good tool for that, this micro jet, but with my arthritic hands, I can't really press it very well. And I have this, which makes a little heat that will melt the knot and, and press it. And then you can just clip off the ends that stick out. So I'm going to do my X's down this seam. I started by wrapping the thread around a few times at the top. Here I am stitching down the seam. I've, um, oh, by the way, a pair of pliers comes in handy I'm using pretty thick thread here. So I've got one leg of the X made and then I'll go in that hole, that slit, then into that one, and there I've made another X, and then my next X will be the one that goes under these two threads, the fifth X, and then four more to finish it off. Here's my, here's my shoe that's almost com completely done. I have to add a and bottom sole onto this midsole that I put on the bottom. I'll cement that on. Say if you have cemented and stitched your bottom sole on in a way that the stitches are protected by cutting a slit of some sort, then you are indeed finished. This video has been useful for you. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel and check out my website simpleshoemaking.com.